for a lot of our ELL students or students with limited formal education, the traditional six period day is a nightmare. And one reason why it's a nightmare is because you have six transitions, short periods with transitions, and every one of those transitions is an opportunity to get confused, to get lost, to not know, wait, what are we doing in this period again? What is this class again? What's my teacher's name again? What the 4 8 adds, especially district-wide, is it allows us to have predictability across schools and across the day. So you don't have a different schedule. Uh, like traditionally right now, we have different schedules for each day and students sort of scratch their heads trying to remember. So predictability, uh, consistency across classes, but also students have less transitions. So only four periods in a day means students can focus on one piece of work, one set of learning outcomes, and then it's easier to move to the next one and less confusing. So we made this change because we knew that the state was coming obviously with a 24 credit requirement that we were really, if we left it on a six period schedule, we were gonna do our kids wrong. We felt like our students would be jam packed in at 23 or 24 credits. They wouldn't, a lot of kids wouldn't maybe graduate on time. We'd have to go another year and we just didn't have room for failure. And though we don't want kids to fail, the truth is some kids just don't make it in that amount of time. Oh, I, I think there's no question that, that it's gonna be, uh, when you consider every single student, that it's gonna be a good thing for them. It's gonna open up opportunities that kids just have not had before. Um, and I think the more opportunities kids have to get out and explore their passions, um, the more opportunities they have to figure out where to go in life. The teachers that I've talked to really enjoy the pace of a 4 by 8 schedule uh, because they're not rushed. They can plan for a day and then plan for another day, so they like that. Uh, and, and the kids respond to it as well. They, they don't feel like they have so much going on in one period that now they have to transition all their homework into the next day. So I think it's going to be you know, a balance not just for kids but for staff. So if you stick with a six period schedule, you almost have to have zero hours the new graduation credits, but that goes counter to the research. We have a strong equity agenda in our district. We want to make sure that all kids have access to our programs, and we found that our zero period classes were the classes our, our poorer families and kids couldn't access. So we went 45 minutes later on our start time, a new eight period schedule, and eliminated all zero hour classes for kids. We feel that the opportunities that the schedule provides around passion for kids and for students um, is far better and, and in terms of, you know, we're not going to have kids here before 8 o'clock and we start at 8.30. We, 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 there's research that says our students are going to function better and you'll see schools all up and down the I-5 corridor have made that change. Yeah. And so having that blend in with, with um, more classes being offered. I think is just going to benefit our students in the long run. As a learner in the longer class periods, so I think it would allow me to ask more questions and maybe reflect and it gives more time for the teacher as more of an instructional period. So maybe they won't be as rushed because I find a lot of my teachers, they say, the, they're rushed and they can't finish, like, okay, we only have five minutes left, here's what she needs to know, and then we have to go ahead and study afterwards, which there's no problem with that. But at the same time, it just gives us more time, and I think that's great. Next year's schedule, it, just the opportunities to have two more classes to take, and for me that's a big deal because there's so many classes I've wanted to take, I just couldn't. Because of the flexibility in the eight period days, I don't have to pick between choir and engineering tech, but now I can do them both. So far I've heard my friends talk a lot about uh, the new forensics class which we have offered but now they're able to fit it into their, uh, their schedule along with criminology, another cool class. I think having longer class periods will help lighten our homework load um, because we'll have more seat time with the teacher and because of that we have more time after school for um, whether it be sports or work or other arrangements we have with music. Uh, there's more time out of school even though we are starting later and getting out later we're going to have more time in class which should essentially mean less homework. What we're trying to do with this schedule is to encourage kids to select courses that they really enjoy and to, per to try to create a balance. And what we've heard from students is they don't want to have a bunch of homework classes or they don't want to just take more classes just because that's 
that's what's going to be presented to them. But to be able to take a PE and not do a PE waiver, to take a CTE class to ex explore a career and not just do you know an AP every single period and then and go home. Um, so I think that having that balance is critical. On behalf of kids, we just went out and tried to figure out what would the best schedule be and how could we go about making sure we had a schedule that worked for kids. And at the same time, um, we did right for what our teachers felt was the content that they needed to cover in their classes. Because I've taught in everything from 55 minutes to 110 minute blocks. And I'm not at all worried about the longer blocks. What I am concerned about is the fact that we have traditionally met uh, 72 times per semester on our schedule, four days a week, and now we'll meet only 45 times. Um, and so in my advanced placement classes, that's going to be a challenge. Um, I don't think it's insurmountable, but uh, I've blocked out quite a bit of time this summer and I'm planning to, to make quite a few changes to how I'm delivering content. Um, and I, I'm confident that we, can, that we can still produce a good AP uh, physics course here, but it's gonna require some changes in the way we do business. We've not only met the state requirement for, for credits, we've also opened up a whole lot of opportunities for kids that we didn't have before. So we've turned what was potentially a challenge into what we think is a really great change for kids. Moral imperative, because if it's not a moral imperative, um, it's just a technical change. You're gonna have, so, it's too complex and too much pushback. You'll give up or you'll get paralyzed. So find out the moral reason why you're doing it. Don't get hung up on just, we're just doing a four by eight or we're looking at the schedule. Look at the whole picture and how we can support kids and, and benefit students. Um, and then out of that, think about different ways that, that we can support staff because that's another piece of this is it's not just for students, but it's also how do we, how do we address some of the concerns.